So tech's working again. You got good vaccine news. You got stimulus progressing. You got rates down. It's kind of hard to build a negative case for stocks, isn't it? It's not hard if you're trying to. And we have this really interesting combination of things happening right now, which is new highs for virtually every sector uh, and new highs for geographic regions all over the world. Japan, for example, making a uh, breakout of a 29-year base. Um, so while you've got all these new highs and all of these different segments of the uh, market cooperating and participating, you also have a huge boom in people being angry. So that's kind of weird, I guess. Uh, but that's what's happening right now uh, uh, on the street and off the street, um, financial, social media. There's just a lot of people that have a lot invested in this not happening. So, but it is. And the run in the Russell 2000, Judge, is really off the charts. We're up 16% in U.S. small caps year to date. What the hell is going on? It's February 9th, and that's quadruple the return in the S&P. I'm looking at you, Amazon, going sideways since July, right? So you have a lot of big stocks that we thought were the horsemen getting it done, not getting it done. And then you've got this secondary and tertiary tier of names. Look at Twitter. This is a red-hot stock right now. This is the stock of the moment. Everything they've done since kicking Trump off, the street loves it. They're talking about subscription revenue. They should have done this five years ago, but whatever. Stock's above 60 for the first time since it came public in, in, uh, in, in 13 or 14. And then you look at, last thing, really quick, XBI. Small, mid, and large biotechs up 24% year to date in that equal weight index, which means you have biotechs that are up 50 and 60% um, just since the year started. It's remarkable. Throw in the banks, regionals, KRE making a 52 week high. To your point, what are you looking at? If you're bearish right now, like literally, what are you looking at? I don't understand. Yeah, Steph, uh, you know, Josh paints a nice canvas for you to, to work off of here. What do you think about the points that he made? You know, amid commentary on the street today that the pendulum swings both ways. You know, one day it's we're going to the moon. The next day it's, well, a, a, a correction is getting more likely or it's already here. We're trying to build a negative short term case because stocks are, you know, overextended. That's the bulk of the negative case amid a backdrop that's so positive. You don't want to be negative, not with the liquidity that we continue to talk about. And we've been talking about this, Scott, since March of last year. Massive, massive amounts of liquidity. M2 is up 26% year over year. That's unprecedented. And we're going to get more. And it looks like the $1.9 trillion package uh, from the Biden administration, it looks like that number might come in at that number instead of a watered down version. So you're talking about massive liquidity. You do not want to fight that. You add on low interest rates, you add on progress on the vaccines and people getting them, and you're going to see better GDP and you're going to see better earnings. And we've been talking about this. This is why I lean more cyclical versus growth, but I do own a combination of both. But back to GDP, we've been seeing pockets of the economy doing quite well. We've talked about housing, we've talked about auto, we've talked about manufacturing. Last week, the ISMs, manufacturing and services, both beat, and new orders were quite strong. Customer inventories are depleted, and the factory orders numbers came in great. Jolts today was very much better than expected. And most importantly, the consumer is poised to spend eventually. I don't know the timing of that, but they have 14% in savings. And typically, on average, it's only 5%. That's a trillion dollars in pent-up potential spending that's coming down the pike, and it will come down the pike. It's just a matter of timing. And one last thing. $4.3 trillion sits in money markets, the average $2.8 trillion. So there is still money on the sidelines, and this is a very favorable liquidity backdrop. That's right. But I, I want mean, to be long. Jason, it's like, where else are you going to put your money? I mean, it, it, it inevitably comes back down to that as much as people sort of scoff at that uh, thought. Really? Where else are you going to put your money other than in U.S. stocks? Absolutely. So I agree with, with all the points I already mentioned. And for me... You know, the liquidity theme is just such an important theme. I mean, we had 900 billion uh, passed in December. We have another 1.9 trillion hanging in the balance, which surely will probably happen over the next couple of weeks. Uh, interest rates low, uh, vaccine uh, progress, yes. And, and, and also, when I look at the, 
the uh, the tenure and the movement there and, and the third year flirting with 2%. You know, market sentiment is very strong here. So, yes, I think you have to be in stocks. I, I, I don't know what the bear case is, but, uh, yeah, you have, you have to be here for uh, now.